objects. What if I told you that this old guy right here built all of that by himself using nothing but primitive tools? I also want to point out the fact that you've got the mainstream narrative of ancient aliens to explain everything, and then you got the YouTube narrative that is slowly growing into mainstream of Tatarians built everything. So do you guys see the similarities there of taking away from our ancestors all of the great things that they have accomplished and saying it couldn't be done by them? Because that's what this whole idea is promoting. So Wally Wallington here, that's really his name, that built this, did some thinking and guy's pretty smart. He came up with this. He realized that if you've got a square block that is 12 inches from corner to corner and you take a half circle and you make half of that radius the same distance, 12 inches from point to point over the radius, then this happens. About moving rocks. That's a 300 pound block. This is a 1600 pound block. Not too difficult. He's a retired construction worker whose passion is moving heavy items. His feats always draw a crowd, mostly family. I thought he was crazy. Who cares about moving blocks around? But then when you look at the, the magnitude of the weights that he's moving around, it is, it is really impressive and he's not using any equipment or anything. In playing with blocks, Wally thinks he's discovered how Stonehenge was moved. This is my first Stonehenge arch I permanently put in place. Uh, this is three blocks, they weigh over a ton each. It's all based on a very simple technique. I found a simple explanation for this, uh, to move a block about the weight of a minivan, would be to place a stone underneath it. And once I balance on it, I can spin it. Of course, with that spin, you've seen I didn't go anywhere. But I got two handles on my lever, and I could place another stone on this side. Now, every time I spin a half rotation, uh, on each stone, I move the block horizontally the distance between the stones. With my own output, I could move a uh, one-ton block 300 feet per hour. Using this technique, he's moved everything from one-ton blocks to buildings. So one guy all by himself with some levers and some stones under the block can move a one-ton block the length of a football field in an hour. Now, as far as the rolling of the stones here, if you were to set this at a little bit of an incline to where your wagons are coming in with the blocks and it's a little bit downhill all the way down to the building site, all you have to do is get off, shove the stone, and it's going to roll right down to where you want it. Then he gets curious and decides to scale it up to see what all he can do. And he moves a whole barn by himself. He said that they ended up moving the barn 300 yards. So that covers moving things. What about lifting them up? We'll check this out. Very simple, but it's genius in its simplicity. I've tried to do this without any mechanical machinery at all. I've used uh, mostly sticks and uh, stones for my equipment. Uh, no pulleys, no hoist, no uh, metal levers. Uh, just try to use gravity too, I believe is my favorite tool. Oop. The first goal is getting this block three feet off the ground. In order to move it up to this point, I just rock the block back and forth, adding weight to that end, and that opens a gap on this side, and uh, just slide a board in. Then I add the weight to that end, there it goes, and slide a board in on this end. Now, he's doing this by himself, but if you have a few people with you, then you have three or four people up on top that just walk back and forth. It's a seesaw, a teeter-totter. That's probably where we get the whole idea of the teeter-totters from, only now it's a kid's toy instead of what the original purpose of it was for. But if you have four people up there, they just walk to one side, you add a shim. They walk to the other side, you add a shim. You go up an inch every 15, 20 seconds. Here's how it's supposed to work. The first thing I'm going to do here is release this temporary shoring I have set and come over here release some of my counterweights and that's going to put the entire weight of the block on this rope so then I'm going to release the rope come back here and the rope's going to be my break I'm going to guide it into the pit the easiest way I can explain this is the, this is just a big teeter-totter and I got the big kid on that end and he's going to go down and this end's going up you ready? 
Yes. All right. Got to just start spraying the sand. The sand will wash out and the block will start coming down. Once the sand is washed from the pit, the block's own weight slowly stands it up. Okay, finally, she's between the lines, guys. Okay, so granted, they probably didn't have water hoses back in the day to wash the sand out with, but if you just started scooping out the sand, you're going to have the same effect. Honestly, what I had always personally thought about Stonehenge was they made a big mound of dirt and then you know, rolled the stones up to the top of the mound of dirt or whatever, dropped it down into the pit, and then removed all the dirt down to the level field. But hey, Wally's a lot smarter than me, and he's been at it longer. Now, what I've been trying to explain to everybody is people have been far more advanced for far longer than anybody is giving them credit for. What do you actually see here? This is a painting of the crucifixion of Jesus supposedly 2,000 years ago. Look in the background. What do you see? You see like a six-story tower, and right next to that, a huge domed building. A lot of people keep thinking that advance means that you have electricity, but guys, electricity isn't the end-all, be-all of everything. And here's the deal, is I've gone through tons of metal detector channels and tons of archaeology discoveries and all this, and you never find ancient washing machines and curling irons, drills, power saws, any of this stuff. We've got the Baghdad battery showing that somebody knew the basics of electricity a long, long time ago. But that is a very rare example. And if people had electrical tools and appliances this whole time, then we'd find some of the remains of that. You know, you'd have independent whistleblowers calling channels like mine or somebody else saying, hey, I found this completely out of place artifact and I don't want to hand it over to the Smithsonian. So there you have it. This is very simplistic but genius technology to where you can roll stones on down through there like they're nothing, like rolling a watermelon. That news crew filmed him at the beginning of his project, and here's where it's at now. He has raised multi-ton stones. He said one of these blocks weighs 19,200 pounds. But... I would like to say thank you to Wooden Nichols. You guys go over to his channel and check him out. Tell him Static said hi for coming on here and calling it how he sees it because he looked into the world's fairs and he looked into the building techniques and everything. And he said, well, no. There, apparently, he doesn't have any problem with them building these things just like I don't have a problem with our ancestors building these things. Why does everybody have to keep putting it off to some mythical race of Tatarians when it was our great-great-grandparents that accomplished all of these amazing works. So by all means, please keep up the good work, sir, and ignore these people. Uh, Don here says, You and Wooden Nichols are both very insulting to this community with your general tone. For the record, Wooden Nichols was as cordial and polite as could be in his video. And it's really not insulting to just come on here and show, you know, visual proof <laughs> that these that our ancestors could build these things. What if I said that I'm the product of Irish and German immigrants to this country? I had a great great grandmother that was full blood Cherokee, that her people used to own the land that I currently reside in. And I find it insulting that people are out there trying to promote a theory that that's not what happened because that's basically what the tatarian theory is saying is that no the native americans weren't here there were advanced tatarians in this country and that immigrants didn't settle i guess i don't know who did build these things according to that theory i mean there's really nothing that ever gets answered with it so i mean did the aliens build it uh, I, I don't get it but i do know this if you want to move some big massive heavy rocks Really easy, cut you out a bunch of little half circles and roll that stuff where you need it to go. Static out.